Whilst bump mapping is a material effect that can work well in many instances, creating the illusion of depth in a material without adding anything of serious consequence to our overall render times, there will be occasions where the fact that this is a render engine trick becomes obvious. On such occasions, especially if again the believability of our materials is integral to the success of our project, we may want to swap bump mapping for displacement mapping. To follow along as we take a look at Mental Ray's displacement controls, open up the displacement.max file from your working files folder. One extremely nice feature that Mental Ray shares in common with many ray trace render engines available for 3ds Max is the ability to generate render time displacement based on grayscale input from a map or maps. This means that rather than having to process extremely dense meshes in the viewport whilst we work, we can postpone all of the heavy mesh subdivision required for good displacement until we actually hit the render button. To show the difference we get when using the same maps to drive the bump and displacement parameters in a material, let's hit the M key to open up the material editor. Here, as you can see, we have a material using both a noise and cellular map as a control mechanism for the bump parameter. So we have a reference point, let's take a render of the material as it stands. And then drop that into channel A of the RAM player. As we have already noted, the material looks great. Until that is, we examine the outline of the sphere. Clearly, what we have is a perfectly smooth profile that is not in the slightest bit broken up. No unevenness is present at all. Let's change that by grabbing the connector wire from our bump network and pipe it instead into the material's displacement slot. Now, we could go ahead and take a test render at this point, but I know that with our current displacement settings, what we would get wouldn't particularly look any better profile-wise than our current bump mapped render. By default, the displacement settings that Mental Ray uses are quite coarse, which is a good thing as this prevents us from piping a complex displacement network into our material and effectively killing our computer because the subdivision requirements we are placing on it are too heavy. You see, render time displacement, especially when using complex map networks, can be extremely demanding from a memory point of view. That means we do well to always start low and work our way up to subdivision values that balance quality of the effect, with the computer resources required to produce it. Of course, if our workstation has 32 gigabytes of RAM or higher, then we are much less likely to run into problems than when working on a four or eight gigabyte system, for example. To refine our displacement effect, we can first of all make a quick tweak to our materials parameters. So if I double click the material header and in the special purpose maps rollout in the parameter editor, set the displacement multiplier value to five, I can then go ahead and hit the render button. If we drop this render into channel B of our RAM player, you can see that there is quite a significant difference in the look that we get now. First of all, our sphere is noticeably bigger. This occurs because if we just look at the cellular node in our shader tree, you can see that there is actually very little black information in here. In mental ray displacement, only black pixels keep our mesh points fixed at their original location. If we wanted to limit this enlargement effect a little, we could make both division colors in the cellular map black. Another very noticeable aspect of our second render is the fact that the sphere's profile is no longer completely smooth and unbroken. Because of the small detail contained in the noise map, we are seeing defined pits and breakup in the outline which clearly makes this a much more believable material effect. Things are, however, still a little rough looking here. So to refine things, let's make use of Mental Ray's global displacement controls found in the render setup dialog. So let's hit F10 to bring that up. As the controls we need are found in the renderer tab, let's click to open that and then make sure we're in the shadows and displacement rollout. Mental Ray's global displacement controls, as you can see, are not particularly extensive, but don't let that fool you. They do give a high level of control regarding the final look of a displacement effect. The three options that we are interested in working with here are edge length, max displacement, and max subdiffs. With the view option checked, our edge length values, as you can see, are being set in pixels. 
If I uncheck view, we switch to actual scene measurements. Typically, working in terms of pixels is a little easier. Although, we do have to remember that the render output resolution we are using will have a big impact on the relative size of our edge lengths when we use this option. The purpose of the edge length value is to let the user specify the smallest possible length of an edge in the displacement solution. By default, the smallest possible edge allowed would be 2 pixels in length, which in an 800 by 450 render, such as we are using here, is percentage-wise quite big, and so will result in a fairly coarse-looking displacement effect. A parameter that works hand-in-glove with the edge length settings is max subdivs. This tells Mental Ray how many times a triangle can be subdivided in order to produce the final effect. The default means that each existing triangle on the mesh can, not will, but can be divided up to 16,000 times if necessary. Typically, for final renders that have fine detail requirements, we will want to set this at its maximum value of 64K, and then control the density of the subdivision by means of the edge length parameter. The max displace control again sets an upper displacement limit, not an actual displacement value. As in this case, I am happy to let the grayscale values in the maps handle this, we can leave this value set at 50 cm. For our final render then, as we have max subdiv set at 64k, let's set the edge length value to 1 pixel, and hit the render button. What we get now is a much finer displacement solution. To really tighten up the look of the displacement, we could easily drop to values of 0.3 or 0.2 pixels for this render if we needed to. One thing worth noting is that these controls are global. Whatever values we set in here will be applied to any displacement mapping going on in the scene, irrespective of how close or how far from the camera an object may be. As you can imagine, that has the potential to be an extremely inefficient use of rendering resources. For that reason, Mental Ray gives us object specific controls that can be applied whilst leaving globals set at default. To do that, all we need to do is select our object in the scene, right click, and come to Object Properties. In the Mental Ray tab, you see we have local controls that are pretty much identical to the globals and work in just the same manner. So, whilst bump mapping, whenever possible, is going to be the preferred option from a processing point of view, on the odd occasion, we may find that the level of realism required in our material makes the use of displacement mapping an absolute must. When rendering with Mental Ray, or even iRay, which also uses pretty much identical displacement controls, this is as simple as a complex rendering effect like displacement is going to get.